Hello, this video will cover an introduction to the Thin Manager application interface. I'm going to launch Thin Manager from my desktop, and you'll see immediately that the Thin Manager application is designed with three main parts. We have a ribbon bar across the top, a tree pane down the left side, and an informational tab system located to the right at the top of the main window. If you look to the tree pane on the left, You'll see that there are some tabs located in that pane as well. Clicking on the first tab shows me my Thin Manager server or Thin Server information. Thin Manager is divided into two components the Thin Server and the Thin Manager interface. The Thin Server is the database that stores all the configurations for users, devices, servers, etc. in the Thin Manager system. Thin Manager itself is the visual interface that we are looking at during this demonstration. So by selecting the Thin Manager Server tab, I can tell that I have a single Thin Server that's up and running, and I can tell that I'm connected to it because of the green icon. I can also tell that it is located on a computer called RDS1. If I select that icon and look over to the right, I'm presented with a tab system that offers me additional information on that item in the tree. So in the case of my Thin Server, I can see the configuration of the Thin Server and all of the information available there for that Thin Server. I can also see license information for the Thin Server, the properties of the Thin Server, in this case, uptime, versions that have to do with my Thin Server, and build packages and whatnot that are loaded. I can see if I have my Thin Server synchronized with the secondary Thin Server in the case of redundancy. I have an event log that lets me know what's happening with the Thin Server. I have reports on the server. I can also see IP assignment from the Thin Server and if I were running any Pixie Boot units in my configuration. Now, moving on down the tabs in the left side tree system, we move to the display servers. Display servers are the sources of content that are generated in a Thin Manager environment. In this case, for this video, I have two remote desktop servers generating my content, RDS1 and RDS2. RDS1 is where our thin server is located, and we looked at that in the previous pane. Also, I have a secondary remote desktop server that is synced with the primary for redundancy. So RDS1 is online, and I can tell that because of the green icon. I also have a single IP camera in my configuration setup for today. Once again, if I select any of the items in the left side tree pane, I'm presented with an informational tab system to the right that gives me additional information about the component selected in the left. For my remote desktop server, I can see the configuration, the properties, the schedule, the users, the sessions, the processes. I can also see a graph of usage and how much my server is being utilized. This is more important when using Smart Session and other tools in the Thin Manager environment for load balancing, et cetera. I also have an event log I can connect to the server directly from the Thin Manager interface. And of course, I can report on my servers as well. The next tab is Display Clients. This is the content actually generated on the display servers. So this would be the actual applications that I would be delivering to my users or my terminals. I can deliver an entire desktop in the Thin Manager interface, or I can deliver single applications. I can also deliver camera feeds. I can deliver shadows of other terminals and even old workstations like an old legacy XP box. I can have that display pushed to a Thin Client through the Thin Manager system. Looking at my terminals, I can have terminal groups, and inside those groups, I can have properties that are associated with each new terminal added to that group. In this case, in my three groups, I have a tethered group, a virtual group, and a wireless group. And I have two terminals that are connected right now and are up and running. Once again, if I select a terminal that is connected, or any terminal for that matter, I'm presented with configuration tabs that give me more information over to the right based on what it is I've selected in the left side tree pane. 
So in this case, for my terminal, I can see the configuration of the terminal, what modules are loaded on that terminal, the schedule for the terminal, the properties for the terminal, and an event log for the terminal. I can even shadow the terminal to see the applications running on that terminal. And of course, I can report on the terminal. Moving along, we have our Thin Manager Users pane. Just like my terminals, I can have users grouped and add users to those groups to inherit similar properties. I can also have applications assigned directly to users. So in this case, I have assigned this maintenance work order system to anyone that is added to the maintenance group. Matt has ownership of the maintenance work order system because of his role within the maintenance group. Of course, we have locations, and that is where we take advantage of our location-based mobility. And I can assign a terminal as a location. And this allows me to have additional functionality that is brought to me when using an Apple iPad, a Windows Surface tablet, or an Android tablet in my environment. Finally, we have Thin Manager Events. Thin Manager Events let you set up event triggers from your configured environment based on standard expressions and comparative logic. These events allow you to automatically react to events in your environment in real time as you might need. The Thin Manager interface also has a very handy tool. One of the most powerful parts of the entire platform is the ability to configure something by using the configuration wizard. To access the configuration wizard, you only need double click on the item in the left side tree pane that you want to edit or reconfigure and the terminal configuration wizard is launched automatically. We won't go through any of these settings in this video as this is just an introduction to the interface, but you can see that there are many kinds of settings and configurations available through the terminal configuration wizard. Once done, changing the configuration or updating the configuration, you would just hit finish and to apply the configuration, you would restart the terminal. In this case, you can just right click to have options of anything in the left side tree pane. So in this case, right clicking on a terminal would allow me to modify, which would open the configuration wizard. I can rename, copy and delete the terminal. I can go to the location if there's one assigned to that. And of course I can restart the terminal. This is how I would send down an updated configuration for one of the terminals in my Thin Manager environment. So that's your basic introduction to the Thin Manager interface. Again, it's a very intuitive layout with a ribbon bar across the top. Every time you select one of the main menu items across the top, the ribbon bar changes as it does in most of your today's modern applications. Lastly, we also have a quick access menu at the top. If there are any particular commands that are important to you as the Thin Manager administrator, you can customize this menu with those desired commands. You simply select the menu that you want to see the commands from, and then you add those to the right side window over here and anything added to the right side window will appear in the quick access menu at the top of the application.